Hey, welcome back to Finnegan's Garage. Cool episode happening today. First off, I'm making big progress on the drag boat headers. They're not completely done, but they are damn close. And I'm gonna have some good tips for you to help you build your own at home if you need to. And I got a brand new t-shirt. Fired up about this one, because it represents all of my great loves in life, other than my wife and kids, you know. And obviously, beer, bacon, and speed parts, it doesn't get any better than that. If you want one of these, head on over to fsmgarage.com right now and get yours. On with the show, right? Let's do this. I want to talk a minute about something that upset a few of you last time I posted a video about welding. In part one of this series, I showed you that I was cleaning the stainless steel tubing with brake clean. And that spooked some of you because I think you assumed immediately that I was using chlorinated brake clean when I wasn't. I was actually using non-chlorinated brake clean, which if you look real close right here, you can get in the red can. I know, weird, right? You're used to seeing non-chlorinated brake clean probably in a green can. But according to CRC, and this is the truth, there's many different formulas of this depending on where you live. And if you live in California, you can get non-chlorinated both in the green and the red can. So don't worry. There wasn't going to be any phosgene poisoning. I wasn't killing myself. I was actually using non-chlorinated brake clean. And whenever I clean tubing that I'm going to weld with this stuff, I usually wait a little while before I do it. I don't go right from hosing it down with brake clean and then head over the welding table and just start burning tubing. Because uh, you never know and I want to live. But if you're still freaked out about using brake clean, I should have told you this before, but you can use um, acetone, denatured alcohol, Hell, soap and water if you're really spooked. So don't worry, still alive, still doing things my way. Might not be your way, but I'm not dead yet. You might be surprised how dirty your filler rod will arrive after you buy it from a welding supply place. Check this out. It's fresh out of the box. Just wiping it down with some acetone. Dirt. Don't want dirt in your weld. So I'm going to go ahead and clean all of this before I get going. That way I don't have to stop later. This is 045 filler rod. The tubing I'm welding is 067. I'm using the smaller rod so that I don't have to use as much heat to weld. You want to reduce the amount of heat you're using when you weld stainless, first because it warps, and second because it actually removes some of its anti-corrosion properties if you overheat stainless. So you don't want bitchin' stainless steel tubing that's all nice and shiny with weld joints that are prone to rusting because you welded at like 1500 degrees, okay? So 045 rod, doesn't take a lot of amperage to melt this. I'm probably going to be welding at like 40 to 42 amps, uh, which will be perfect. All right, time to weld the primary tubes together. Remember, this is 304 stainless, not 321. It's all been tacked together, test fitted. I'm confident this is going to fit the boat engine, so now I can actually finish weld it. And to start with, we're going to plug both ends of the tube with these plastic caps that I got from stainlessheaders.com. They give them to you for free, which is kind of nice, and they're great for purging. I usually run the hose into a straight end of the pipe. That way, no matter how I rotate it, it tends not to wind the hose up. And the hose is nothing more than some plastic line that I got out of the plumbing section of Home Depot. So I'll go in there like that, and then Turn on our argon. You can tee this line into the same argon tank that's connected to your welder, or you can get another tank like I do because back purging eats up a lot of argon, and you can just run it straight to that. I'm gonna crank this up to 30 cubic feet per hour, let it purge for a little while, and then back it down to 10 so there's less turbulence in there when I'm actually welding. Uh, my welding setup is pretty basic. It's just a Miller 280DX, which is an inverter machine. Uh, it'll weld up to 280 amps. 
This is just a W280 torch, the one that came with it, but I changed the cup to a number 12 Furic cup. Uh, it has a gas lens in there, the coverage is really good. That's a 1 16th of an inch diameter uh, tungsten. It's 2% lanthanum. I like the lanthanum a little better than the serrated and thorated because uh, the tip seems to last a little longer. This is also non-radioactive, which is good, so you can grind this a whole bunch without wearing a face mask and, you know, 20 years from now you're not going to die. That's 045 filler rod, 308 stainless. It's smaller than the wall thickness of the tubing, which means I'm not going to use as much heat to get the filler rod to melt. Okay, so we've purged plenty. Turn our welder on here. My table is a Miller Arc Station, which is a modular welding table. You can make it longer, shorter, you can add drawers, you can add doors, you can do all these things to it without having to spend days fabricating a table yourself. It just bolts together, which is nice. Uh, for fixturing, I usually just use one set of clamps. This is from Stronghand Tools. This is made for clamping tubing. So you can literally, come over here camera lady, you can literally clamp this in any fashion you want and just keep moving it around as you're welding. So you don't need a bunch of expensive clamps or fixtures, you can just buy one. These blocks of aluminum are just for resting my hand on when I'm welding. They're heavy enough that they don't move around. Um, but you can get these out of the REM section as your local metal supplier for like $3.50 a pound, which is nice. Alright, so we're purged, we're fired up. Let's weld. I'm going to start right there. I already dropped my torch and broke my tungsten, so... Now I get to make another one. <laughs> okay. I'll be back in a minute. Got my ground on my table, which for most of this will work. I might have to move it later. I'm using a Furic, I think this is a number 12 cup. This is my favorite cup right now. You can hear the argon still flowing, that's the post flow. That's cooling the weld puddle and making sure no oxygen gets to it as it cools. Okay, and rather than let this video run full speed all day, because I'm going to be here about eight hours, I'm going to speed this thing up and uh, you can watch a time lapse of these pipes getting all built. I'll stop it again later whenever I have something useful to tell you. like. I'm thirsty, let's get a beer. to start working at one end of the tube and then I'll weld everything I can reach here, 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 then rotate the tube and weld again. 
uh, instead of welding, flipping the tube, welding, flipping the tube, and having to do that every time I get to a new joint. Saves a little bit of time. Helps when you turn your helmet on too. Okay, I'm blind now. Let's try that again. So we're welding stainless steel tubing together to build our headers. And there's a lot of different types of this stuff. Some of it is alloyed with chromium. Some of it is alloyed with chromium nickel. But with all stainless, you have to be careful with how you weld it. You want to back purge it with an inert gas, like argon. And the reason for that is if you don't back purge stainless steel, when you get it up to welding temperatures, it oxidizes and it'll get something that's called sugaring on the back side of the weld. And it looks horrible. It's not a flat weld, which impedes exhaust flow, but it's also prone to cracking. Um, it's not as strong as the tubing. It's just not good. So what you need to do is flow argon through this tube while you're welding. And what that does is that displaces all of the oxygen. So all of the impurities that are in the air, gone. You've got an inert gas back in there, and what you end up with is a really nice weld that is as strong, if not stronger, than the base metal or the tubing. <laughs> primary tubes are welded. Of course the flanges are still tacked to the tubes. We'll have to finish that real quick. But what I wanted to show you before I go forward is this bitchin double slip merge collector from stainlessheaders.com. It's really tricked the way it works. The uh, primary tube slides into the collector right there. And as the exhaust gases go through this, they're going to heat it up and expand it into this, and which makes it seal better. So it's bottomed out there in the tapered part, and it's expanding inside of it to seal. This sleeve is going to get welded all the way around the primary tube so that as the collector tubing expands with heat, it's going to seal here, and then it also bottoms out into the tapered part of that. So this is virtually leak free if you do it properly. And then we'll weld a couple of tabs, one here and one on the other side, that'll bolt together to keep this thing from blowing off. So we'll do that. We'll weld that together, we'll weld the flanges on, then the header is basically done. Then I just have to finalize the turbo placement, build the exhaust inlet for the turbos, mount the wastegates, 
and the exhaust system's done. One of the last things you've got to do here is weld the primary tubes to the flange more permanently. As you can see, there's a pretty big gap here, and that's because these Hemi heads have a monster oval port for the exhaust. And obviously our primary tubes were round. I've bent them in the vise to fit them in there, and I tacked them here and on the other side so that I could trial fit all the other tubes. Now we're ready to finish this job, so I'll take a piece of round stock, set it in there, tap it with a hammer, and this American-made stainless is really easy to manipulate. It's dead cold right now. I haven't even welded on it. Obviously, once you weld, it gets a little easier to move, but before we even start welding, we're going to be able to move this quite a bit to get it to conform to the shape of the flange opening. See how much further it's moved over there? We'll tap on it a little more, get that to touch, then we'll weld there, and that will heat this up enough where it won't take any any work at all to get that to move the rest of the way and stretch the tube to meet the flange. The flange is now. I'm going to talk about back purging one more time because you can back purge without having the gas run through the tube. We're about to weld the flange to the tube, and David is going to be my assistant here. David's pretty cool. We wired my garage. Him and Brandon. <laughs> um, we've increased the size of our purge line. It's just a piece of rubber fuel line, I think 3 8 and it's sitting over an air tool fitting with a piece of tubing taped to the end of that. Basically what we did was we made a bigger cup, and Dave's going to sit here and put this bigger cup with argon flowing through it right where I'm welding, and he's going to run it between the flange and the tube everywhere I'm welding. So he's going to purge the back side of this without me putting gas through this. All right. Ready? gas flowing out of that now. Alright Dave, let's go right here and we're going to get about an inch of weld, maybe an inch and a half of weld from here to here and then we'll hammer the flange again. So start, yeah right there.
here's a look at the completely welded flange, at least on the back side. You'll notice that I've gone and resurfaced the flange to make sure it's flat, but overall I'm happy with it. It's got good color, good penetration. What's left to do now is weld the front side of all these flanges and then weld the sleeves onto the primary tubes, reassemble the header, and then figure out where I'm going to mount the turbos. That'll all happen in another video because right now I've got a wife and kids sitting upstairs waiting for me to go make an appearance and be a husband and a father again. So I'm going to go do that. You guys enjoy the holiday or whatever day it is when you finally decide to watch this thing, and I'll see you next time on Finnegan's Garage.